Spring is the best season of the year for many people. Warm, sunny days, the earth springing forth with new life. Flowers, budding trees, baby animals, all seem to joyfully announce that the long, cold winter is over. No other springtime custom encapsulates these celebrations of new life quite like Easter. From baby animals to Easter eggs and Easter egg hunts, to sunrise Sunday services and more, Easter is a beloved tradition to many people. Easter Sunday is the highlight of the Roman Catholic liturgical year when the resurrection of Jesus Christ is celebrated. According to their catechism, Easter is not simply one feast among others, but the feast of feasts, the solemnity of solemnities, just as the Eucharist is the sacrament of sacraments, the great sacrament. Saint Athanasius calls Easter the great Sunday, and the Eastern churches call Holy Week the great week, the mystery of the resurrection in which Christ crushed death. The origins of Easter, however, reveal that it flows directly from ancient paganism. Shortly after the flood, Nimrod re-established idolatry in the earth. After his death, Nimrod was promoted as the original sun god. His widow, Semiramis, was called the Queen of Heaven. Various cultures continued the idolatry of these original pagans under different names. To the Egyptians, Semiramis was Isis. To the Babylonians, she was Beltis, consort to the god Bel. To the Canaanites, she was Asarti. The Assyrians called her Ishtar. The worship of these goddesses involved occult fertility practices. These degrading rites were practiced even by the Israelites when in apostasy. Yahuwah clearly denounced any Israelite involvement in these pagan celebrations. Do you not see what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes for the Queen of Heaven. And they pour out drink offerings to other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. And he said to me, Turn again, and you will see greater abominations than they are doing. So he brought me to the door of the north gate of Yahuwah's house, and to my dismay, women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. Modern Easter has no basis in the pure religion of heaven. All of its traditions are pagan. Rabbits and dyed Easter eggs symbolize fertility. Hot cross buns were the cakes offered to the Queen of Heaven. The 40 days of weeping for Tammuz are now the 40 days of Lent leading up to Easter. Sunrise services were performed by pagan priests to honor the sun god. Celebration of Easter does not honor the death and resurrection of the Savior. Participation in pagan practices honors Satan. No amount of renaming it by Christian names can purify Easter of its pagan origins. Easter is much more than a pagan imposter pretending to be Christian, lurking behind the pretty facade. Easter is a cover-up for the greatest fraud of all time, a calendar change which hides the true day of the resurrection and the true seventh-day Sabbath. As the years passed and the first Christians died, paganism began to corrupt the once pure faith. The church in Rome, greedy of ever greater power, sought ways to increase her influence. To conciliate the pagans to nominal Christianity, Rome, pursuing its usual policy, 
took measures to get the Christian and pagan festivals amalgamated. And by a complicated but skillful adjustment of the calendar, it was found no difficult matter in general to get paganism and Christianity, now far sunk in idolatry, in this, as in so many other things, to shake hands. This change of the calendar in regard to Easter was attended with momentous consequences. It brought into the church the grossest corruption and the rankest superstition. This change of calendar also changed the day of worship. This is admitted by Roman Catholics who point to it as the sign of their authority. Sunday is purely a creation of the Catholic Church. They, the Protestants, deem it their duty to keep the Sunday holy. Why? Because the Catholic Church tells them to do so. They have no other reason. The author of the Sunday law is the Catholic Church. One Catholic bishop went so far as to state, It was the Catholic Church which made the law, obliging us to keep Sunday holy. The Church made this law long after the Bible was written. Hence, the law is not in the Bible. The Catholic Church abolished not only the Sabbath, but all the other Jewish festivals. The Israelite festival, which was outlawed in favor of Easter, was Passover. All early Christians kept the feasts of Yahuwah as outlined in Leviticus 23. Paganized Christians still wanted to celebrate Easter, while apostolic Christians, still clinging to a pure faith, observed Passover. Since the second century AD, there had been a divergence of opinion about the date for celebrating the Paschal, Easter, anniversary of the Lord's Passion, death, burial, and resurrection. The most ancient practice appears to have been to observe the 14th, the Passover date, 15th and 16th days of the lunar month, regardless of the day of the Julian week these dates might fall on from year to year. The bishops of Rome, desirous of enhancing the observance of Sunday as a church festival, rule that the annual celebration should always be held on the Friday, Saturday and Sunday following the 14th day of the lunar month. This controversy lasted almost two centuries until the Emperor Constantine intervened in behalf of the Roman bishops and outlawed the other group. The point of contention appeared deceptively simple. Passover versus Easter. The issues at stake, however, were immense. The only way to determine when Passover occurs is to use the biblical lunisolar calendar, for only by observing the moon can one count to the 14th day following the first visible crescent. Because the seventh-day Sabbath was also calculated from the first visible crescent, a ruling in favor of Easter being observed on a Julian date would also affect the seventh-day Sabbath. These contentions had agitated the churches of Asia since the time of the Roman Bishop Victor, who had persecuted the churches of Asia for following the 14th day heresy, as they called it, in reference to the Passover. The future Easter observance was to be rendered independent of Jewish calculation. Here is the real significance of Easter. Sunday is kept as a day of worship because of Easter Sunday. It is claimed that the Savior was resurrected then. Consequently, it is assumed that the day before Easter Sunday, Saturday, is the seventh day Sabbath. Jews today worship on Saturday rather than the biblical seventh day Sabbath. However, Jewish scholars admit that the calendar in use for worship today is not the same as was used in Bible times. The new moon is still, 
and the Sabbath originally was dependent upon the lunar cycle. The Jews point to the extreme persecution following the Council of Nicaea's decision to set aside Jewish time calculation as the reason for why they no longer use the biblical calendar. Declaring the new months by observation of the new moon and the new year by the arrival of spring can only be done by the Sanhedrin. In the time of Hillel II, 4th century CE, the Romans prohibited this practice. Jewish scholars understand that Christianity stepped free of its biblical roots when the pagan Easter was substituted for the true Passover. At the Council of Nicaea, the last thread was snapped which connected Christianity to its parent stock. The festival of Easter had up till now been celebrated for the most part at the same time as the Jewish Passover, and indeed upon the days calculated and fixed by the Sanhedrin in Judea for its celebration. But in future, its observance was to be rendered altogether independent of the Jewish calendar. Emperor Constantine stated, For it is unbecoming beyond measure that on this holiest of festivals we should follow the customs of the Jews. Henceforward, let us have nothing in common with this odious people. Our Savior has shown us another path. It would indeed be absurd if the Jews were able to boast that we are not in a position to celebrate the Passover without the aid of their rules or time calculations. The truth is, Easter is a fraud. It is not the day upon which the Savior arose from the grave, nor is Saturday the seventh day Sabbath of the Bible. Easter is, and has always been, a pagan holiday celebrating fertility. It was substituted for Yahuwah's Passover at the Council of Nicaea in the 4th century when the Church of Rome decided to set aside Hebrew calculation of time. Now in this last generation, truth is to be restored. All who wish to express their gratitude for the death of their Savior will commemorate it on the day upon which he died, Passover. This can only be calculated by the original calendar of creation. Any other observance gives honor to Satan, the one who has set himself up in opposition to heaven. Today, you can choose which day represents your beliefs, Passover or Easter. You can choose to which power you wish to give honor and worship, the Savior or his enemy, Satan. You can choose on which day, calculated by which calendar, you offer that worship. The choice is yours.